call to worship comes from Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Indeed, as we rejoice, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Let us praise him. Let us worship him as we sing that wonderful hymn, And Can It Be? Sing with me, And Can It Be? And can it be that I should
Hello everyone. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And truly how wonderful it is to be with you once again. As we have gathered wherever we may be. In our homes. In our offices. All over the country. All over the world. Truly it's wonderful to be with you. It feels like an age I've been here last. And um, last Sunday I was at St. Magnus in Rainfontein. And just for this once, one week I've skipped, it feels as if I haven't spoken to you in an age. Truly, it's an honor and a privilege to be with you. And it truly is great as we've gathered to praise and worship the Lord and just become silent at the foot of the cross. Indeed, today is a very special day as it marks the beginning of Holy Week. Today is Palm Sunday where we celebrate the triumphal entry where Jesus enters Jerusalem and we all know how this week ends for Jesus Christ. We praise him for that. We worship him for that. And that is indeed an honor and a privilege that we are his children and that he came to save each and every one of us. But may I inquire how each and every one is doing I hope and trust that you are all well and that under the circumstances all is still going well with you. Let us commence our service as we start with our Old Testament reading. Indeed a mistake, not an Old Testament reading but a New Testament reading. My apologies for that. Our reading comes from the Gospel of John chapter 12. Reading verses 12 to 15. The next day the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and sat upon it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming seated on a donkey's colt. Come let us praise the Lord in song. Let us sing from our hearts as we open our hearts before him. We join together in singing that wonderful song, Ancient of Days. Oh yes. Oh God, and your 
So let us come before the Lord in prayer. Come, let us pray. O oh, merciful and gracious Father, we greet you this morning, Lord, as we've come into your presence with singing, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, Lord, as we've come to celebrate this very special day, this Palm Sunday, Lord, where we think back on the day in which Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, we can only stand in awe as we know why you did this, Lord Jesus. O oh Lord, we come proclaiming your majesty, proclaiming that you are the Lord of lords and the God of gods, and it is you that we worship today. But Lord, as we come this morning celebrating and rejoicing, Lord, we also know that we have to become serious as we think back and just recap on a week in which we have hurt you, where we've hurt one another, Lord, and where we haven't been obedient to your calling. Oh Lord, as we come, we know we need to confess our sins and come clean with you. So Lord, as we come now, in our silence, we just want to offer our personal and individual confessions to you. Hear our hearts now, Lord. Oh dear Lord God, we've emptied our hearts before you and Lord we pray that you will remove our sins from us, that you will forgive us Lord, so that we may be justified and sanctified in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, help us to realize that you have forgiven us. Help us to realize Lord that we go into a world not perfect, but that we are forgiven and we are forgiven in the name of our Lord Jesus. And it's because of the cross and that we are created a new creation in him that we are forgiven. Oh Lord, we thank you and we praise you for that. That in the name of Jesus we can come to you for atonement. But oh Lord, as we come now to our service today, we just pray that you will touch each and every one of us, that you will hold us very tightly, that you will bless us in what it is that we do here on earth, and Lord, that you will help us to take something out of this service. So, Lord, we pray, be with us now, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lesson today comes from Hebrews chapter 5, reading verses 5 to 10. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, You are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions, with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. And was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Come let us ask the Lord just to grant us the wisdom to understand these scriptures today. Come, let us pray. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, as we've come, Lord, celebrating, rejoicing and praising you, Lord, we've also come to learn from you, Lord. And yes, Lord, so often we read your scriptures and we have no clue on the meaning of those scriptures. So, Lord, you did say that through your Holy Spirit, you will open our eyes to understand your scriptures. We pray that now, Lord that you will open our eyes, that you will open our minds and our hearts 
so that truly we can receive the wisdom to understand exactly what it is that you want us to hear, exactly what it is that you want us to learn. So, Lord, we pray, hold each and every one of us very tightly. Open our hearts and minds so that we can receive what you want us to learn today. And, Lord, as I bring your message to these, your people, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will take control over me and that each and every word that flows from my lip will be yours and that those words will bring you honor and glory at all times. So, Lord, we pray, be with us now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, let us prayerfully sing our next song. It's personally one of my favorites. I'll never forget the, in my ordination service, I have a very good friend, John DeLonger, who specially flew up from Cape Town to sing this song at my ordination. Above all powers... Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what And laid behind a stone You lived to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me
As I said previously, today is a very important day. It's a very special day, which marks literally the beginning of the end. The end will so thought the evil one, but truly it marked the beginning of the beginning, the beginning of a new life. It was now that this was the beginning of the triumphal entry where Jesus would come and triumph over evil, where he took control over both good and bad. But what is so amazing is how Jesus was misinterpreted by his own people. They heard he was coming. They picked palm branches and they waved them. People threw their cloaks on the ground for Jesus to walk on. And they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They shouted that he is their king. And yet, a week later, they rejected him. They shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Little did they know who Jesus was. My question to you today is, do you know who Jesus is? I know this question has been asked umpteen times by various preachers, by various theologians. But I'm asking you today, who is this Jesus that came riding into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey? One who the Jews claimed to be their king, but yet rejected him seven days later. And therefore my focus sticks today is not so much on, on his entry into Jerusalem, but rather as we celebrate and start this holy week, who is this Jesus? And you know, today I want us to get this thing right of who Jesus is. Very many of us do not really realize how great and how wonderful and how big Jesus truly is. We so often just refer to him, oh yes, Jesus, he's the son of God. Uh, so what? Well, I want to tell you, he's much more than that. Okay, John, he might be part of the Trinity. You know what? That is true. But he's not just part of the Trinity. Because God is three in one. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Jesus is not just part of it. He is God. And I don't want us to make the mistake, as the one Bible translation gives it in John 1, that he is a God. No, he's not a God. He is the God. And I'm very passionate about Jesus when I talk about him, because people seem to think that Jesus and God are on the same level as what they are. Folks, I know I've spoken about this a million times, and I'm going to still speak about it a million times, but Jesus is not on the same level as what we are. We just think of Louis Giglio's description in his DVD, Indescribable, 
on how many billions of galaxies there are and we live in the Milky Way galaxy and the diameter of that Milky Way galaxy is a hundred thousand light years years and yet Jesus holds all these millions of galaxies in the palm of his hand and you know what we live on planet earth and planet earth is a mere speck in the milky way galaxy never mind even speaking of these millions of galaxies so folks jesus is not on our level he's not our chummy Yes, he says he is our friend. But when we say he is our friend, we need to say it with a necessary reverence, respecting and knowing that he is Almighty God. Some of us think, okay, John, he's God. And then we try and manipulate him. I so often hear how people tell their stories. On how they manipulate Jesus and try and manipulate God you know God if you do this then I will do that for you you know Lord um, my throat I've got cancer in my throat and if you heal my throat I will use my throat to sing for you I will serve you you see this is how we try and manipulate Jesus Christ and yet, you know what? Jesus has done it all for us. He came to this earth and he went to that cross. In our passage today that we read of Hebrews, which incidentally, I just remind you, it's accredited to Paul, but it is thought that it was not literally written by Paul, but rather he scribed. Because the style of writing is different to that that Paul writes. But Paul records and he writes this in this text. That God says, and God says this to crowds. Remember where he went to be baptized and he came up out of the water. The scriptures are very clear in saying that out of the clouds came a voice saying this is my son and Paul yeah writes and today I am your father because he knows what Jesus went through to come where he is to this day but then that goes one step further and it says but God made Jesus, his own son, the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Now, how many of you have ever gone to look up who is Melchizedek? Do you know who Melchizedek is? Anybody know? No, Melchizedek was a king. But he was not only a king, he was the chief priest. And remember the difference here is with Melchizedek, he was elected by the people to be the priest. But Jesus was appointed the priest by God. Why does he say the order of Melchizedek? Because remember, there is no higher priest than Jesus. Up until Jesus, there was no higher priest than Melchizedek. He was the highest of high chief priests. But Jesus supersedes him. But as we know, Melchizedek's life came to an end. And no longer was he the chief priest. But here he says that Jesus will be the chief priest forever. In other words, to all eternity, Jesus will be the chief priest he is the highest of high. And yes, folks, not only is he our chief priest because he was appointed by God, 
but just think for a little while. What does John 1 say to us? It says, in the beginning was God, and it carries on to that old rhyme. And it says, through Jesus, everything was created. In other words, we were created through Jesus. In other words, he has the right to be our chief priest because we were created through him. So he's not only there to be our priest, he created us. It was through him that we were created. And who knows us better than Jesus himself? He is the one. He is our chief high priest. But let us go a little bit further into what that text says to us. That text says to us that it was through his suffering he came to obedience. Now let's really stop and just think at that for a little while. Why do you think? Doesn't it seem a little bit unfair that it was through the suffering that Jesus went through that he came to obedience? Because Jesus didn't have any sin on him. Never ever in his whole life as a human being did he have, ever, have any sin. But yet here he comes to obedience. So have you ever stopped to think about this? And remember, I want us to be mindful of this as we go through our Holy Week. Yes. It's because Jesus took our sins upon himself, making himself disobedient, making himself a sinner. So that we could be set free and that we could live. Yes, folks. Remember what I explained to you? That in the Old Testament, that the family would bring an animal without blemish to the chief priest. They would then put their hands on this animal and their sins would be transferred onto this animal. The animal will then be offered to God thus their sins would be atoned for and that is why we so often refer to Jesus as the lamb why because our sins were transferred onto him remember when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we are in communion with him our sins get transferred to him and it is through his death he became the sacrificial lamb for you and for me. And that is why through and by going to the cross and through death he has come to obedience again. He's suffering. And I want us just to stop there just for a few minutes Folks, I want to say to you that there's nothing on this earth that we can suffer that Jesus didn't suffer. You can talk about pain. You know, when Jesus was tortured, he was tortured severely, so much so that I don't think we would ever even survive what he went through. I'm just going to use one example. When he was flocked, do you know on the tips of the whips that he was flocked with were pieces of iron. That iron literally ripped into his flesh. And when they pulled the whip out, it jerked. It ripped the flesh out of his body. Have you ever, ever felt pain like that? I don't think so. So there's no pain that you can go through that Jesus hasn't already experienced. I also want to say to you this morning, you may say, John, yeah, that's true, but what about emotional pain? Well, 
just stop and think for a while. How was Joseph, how was Jesus mocked in front of everybody? Just think of that. He was belittled. He was harassed. He was embarrassed. Publicly. He was rejected by his own people. What happened when Pilate gave, the, gave his people the opportunity to set him free? Remember the story between him and Barabbas? Who did they go for? They went for the murderer. In other words, openly in front of everybody, he was rejected. What more pain of the emotional pain can you get than that? Your own people, the people you created, the people that you came to the earth for to save them. They are the ones that reject you. He's even in your bank account. He's all over and Jesus knows your suffering. Remember where he comes out of. He didn't come out of this rich, affluent family. His father was a carpenter. Joseph and Mary were simple people. So he knew poverty. He knew exactly what it was. So there is no debate or argument you can come forward with saying that Jesus never suffered this. I can carry on on the suffering of Jesus for quite a while longer. But please, if you find some pain that you've gone through, be it bodily, be it emotionally, be it heartbroken, Jesus went through that. He went through each and every one of those. Even witnessing John the Baptist losing his head. Again I repeat, there's no pain that you are going through or suffering that Jesus has not encountered. So this Holy Week, I want you to turn your thoughts away from yourself. And I want you to go into this Holy Week celebrating, realizing and knowing exactly what it is that Jesus did for you. That you know who this Jesus is. That we talk so freely about. That we sing so freely about. And that we realize what it is that he came to do. That song we just spoke about. The words come back. Trampled like a rose. Why a rose? Because he came in all beauty. He came to this earth. And we are the ones that threw him to the ground and trampled on him. We destroyed him. We are the ones that destroyed his body. It's because of our sin. Because of ourselves that we destroyed him. Do not let us be. Like his people were when he came rushing into Jerusalem where we praise him and worship him and a couple of days later we reject him. My prayer for you is through this holy week you will journey with God so that you can truly come to know the almighty God in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Come, let us pray. Almighty God, dear Lord Jesus, we have heard your word to us today, Lord. And yes, Lord, so often we've misinterpreted, misunderstood who you truly are. Oh, Lord, we thank you for speaking to us through your word today. 
Lord, help us to understand and really come to grips with who you truly are and how wonderful and how great you are. So, dear Lord Jesus, we want to pray that through this holy week, you will journey with us and that you will bring us to appreciate exactly what it is that you did for us. Oh, Lord, truly what a friend you have been for us in coming to save us, in coming to adopt us to be part of your family and setting us free from the evil one. Oh, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for that. And Holy Spirit, as we come now in this holy week, we pray that you will help us to resist any onslaughts of the evil one, that we will withstand him, and that we will resist all temptation, and that we will focus only on you, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, we pray that when we do go astray, that you will hem us in, and that you will convict us, Touch each and every one of us so that we may know that you are with us and that you are the God of gods and the Lord of lords. Oh Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you give to us. We thank you that in this week we can celebrate you, that we can learn from you and that we can just once again relive how you came to set us free. So Lord Jesus, we praise you. And we thank you in the name above all names, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us conclude our service today as we join together in singing that wonderful song and proclaiming what a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not Everything to God in prayer Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We need never be discouraged Take it to the friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer Of care, precious.
precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In His arms He'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. Yes, in His arms He'll take and shield you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Receive now the blessing, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with us here now today and forevermore. Amen. Folks, that brings an end to our service today. Truly what an honor and a privilege it has been to share God's word with you. May God bless you richly in this week that lies ahead. May he bless you with his richest blessing until we meet again. So until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, and always remember that Jesus is always there for you. Goodbye now.